What is it supposed to taste like? Um, it's, it's, it's gonna taste like whatever it tastes like. <laughs> Rainbow food, there's no supposed to. There only is. Right? No. Today on Don't Panic Pantry, we have my friend Daniel Patterson, the uh, massively overqualified chef, uh, to be here in my kitchen to screw around with things that I have in my house. You may know him from restaurants like Alta and West Adams here, or uh, the acclaimed Michelin star, all the fancy words, uh, Qua in San Francisco. And I can't believe he came to our house to cook in it. So uh, welcome. He's gonna just look around with no planning and no prep whatsoever and make a meal with things that we happen to have lying around. Excited to be here and cook whatever. If you want to make anything out of uh, a baby's Vegemite. snack crackers. Vegemite. Seaweed flakes. What kind of seaweed? Wakame. Uh, that okay. is Alaskan wakame. Yeah, got a nice, actually I don't know if it's nice, but I bought it. It's an aged uh, goat cheese from the farmer's market. Capers? Yes. I really like dandelion greens. Yeah, do it. My daughter's smoothie will survive without them. Oh, are you taking food <laughs> from your children's mouths? Is that where we're going with this? Oh, oh my God. So you know what caught my eye? This bowl, can I, can I have it? Uh, the potatoes, yep. Weiser? Yep. So I think steaming is very underrated with potatoes. Kind of keeps them intact. Are these your only dried chilies? Okay, cool. How about? Well, this is what we're gonna use. I've got tribute peppers. Tribute peppers. Oh yeah. And some urging towels. I've also got a Fresno chili oil. Let's make our own. I like it. Are these the Arbols or the Urging Tower or both? Both. Mmm. Mmm. Yummy. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta feel alive sometimes. <laughs> That's what does it for you? Neutral oil. Yeah. Okay, it's gonna get loud. Okay, so, so is that steamy, hot? You know, the color's beautiful. Mm, very tasty. So what I would normally do is leave everything all together, put it in a jar, shake it up every couple days. Yeah. So we're gonna let it settle. Mm -hmm. We'll use off of the top, but then you can keep this. Yep. And then give it a day or two and strain it off. Here's what I'm thinking. Yeah. We got gonna have steamed potatoes. Mm -hmm. We'll put them on a plate. We're gonna have a little chili oil. Uh, dandelion greens will make a salsa verde, and then um, let's try this. The idea is something oxidative, nutty. It's good. Go. Yeah. We're gonna use stems, we're gonna use everything. Great. We're gonna blanch it, so it doesn't particularly matter what we use. I think maybe a little bit of shallot, since they're right here in front of me, some garlic. You know what'd be fun is just to do it in a mortar and pestle. Yeah. Little vibe check on these guys. They want to go a little more tender because by the time they cool, they'll harden back up. It's the nature of starch. I, the things that I do in restaurants, I, I try not to do them too much at home. Yeah, it's, it's a totally different style of cooking and a different Oh, function. these are um, bitter as fuck too. Oh, are they? So I'm cooking this all the way until it's tender. Okay. The sweetness will come out a little more, and if you leave it uh, a little undercooked, when you chop it up, the part that isn't cooked will turn gray. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna cook it, uh, rinse it out, and then when we're squeezing the water out of it, you'll see it kind of runs out a little bit like yeah. brownish. You might want to dampen the uh, amount of bitterness a little bit. Yeah. And you know what would be great? Let's do a few collard greens. Great. That's some spigarello too, if you want to go that route. So uh, how would you explain spigarello to people who haven't heard of it before? It's like kale. So it's got that kind of cruciferous quality. Once we put it together, we'll see what direction we want to go with it. Uh, I was thinking capers. Definitely we'll drizzle a little chili oil around. Yeah. So we get a little spiciness. We get this cheese stuff. We get the potatoes. You get kind of sweet, bitter. Mm -hmm earthy, and then um, the salsa berry is gonna have a lot of acidity. Uh, okay, so a little bit of salt, and the salt kind of helps uh, break it down. 
So we're gonna get this down to a nice little paste. Yeah. You know, in restaurants, they'll, they'll take their shallots and they'll cut it this way and then they'll cut it this way. And yeah. Yeah, I don't do that. Because what's happening is every time you cut something, it, it busts open those cells and you're, with herbs, um, when, you, when you see people chopping, they have a big pile. Yeah. They're, they're cutting through one layer, but they're probably smashing four other layers. That's why the cutting board looks green at the end. Right. So spreading it out seems like it takes longer, but actually is more respectful. Do you have some champagne white wine vinegar? It's one of uh, the most used things. While we're chopping this, let's do this thing. And these guys are gonna cook super fast. I started the, the shallots with the vinegar, by the way. It pickles them a little bit, gets some of the gassiness out of them, and so it kinda, kinda tones them down a little bit from it's the It's like a the raw. micro pickle. Yeah. There's absolutely no reason to do this in here, except it doesn't dirty another bowl. Yeah, which is actually a very good reason. So we're gonna put some salt in here and we're gonna... So usually I put about twice as much lemon juice as vinegar. Mm -hmm. And the vinegar kind of cleans it up, um, yeah. gives it a sharpness, and then the lemon is like sugar and acid combined. Yeah. Just, that's its nature. And then... Uh, Oh, olive oil. So the, the greens really eat up the, the oil. Mm-hmm. So it'll sit for a minute. And... As will the potatoes. Let's see where we're at. Not mad. Ooh. Um, and like the little bit of crunch you're getting from like the, the, stems. the stems and stuff, mm -hmm. but it's like, it's not hard. It's like a tender crunch. But, so it needs something. So capers we can do. You got all that seaweed stuff, right? Oh, yeah. So grab some seaweed. I want the first thing you put your hands on. Because uh, it doesn't really matter. Oh, yeah, not that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that kelp right in front of you. Mm -hmm. This is much more of a linear saline uh, kind of ocean mm -hmm. thing. What we're going to do, since we have this hot water here, I'm going to be lazy and just throw it in. Yes. And this is basically to hydrate it so that you can chop it up. That's it. But you can, you can see how the little ping of the capers would be good. Yeah. I'm chopping these up a little bit so you don't get a, like a, a giant piece. So this thing also eats up salt. So you keep adding more oil, you keep adding more vinegar, you keep adding more salt yeah. to balance it. Can I invite you to help me? Yeah. Mm, that crushed garlic smells really good. Maybe take some of... Mm. Do you have crunchy salt? Yes. A few grains of this. And then let's just plop it down. I'm just here getting fired from my, my prep cook job. Hey, so this cheese is crumbly. Uh-huh. So it will resist me. Sometimes people don't understand. You gotta like... When you get in a fight with an ingredient, try and make it do something it doesn't want to do, you always lose. I think that applies to people, too. No, you can win fights with people. <laughs> and then... Ooh, that is gorgeous. It sucks. I mean, I want to eat rather a lot of this. So this, I yeah. like the bitterness. Mm -hmm. And I like the, the brightness and the high acid. And then the potatoes are so creamy that they kind of just take all of that in and... Yeah, so these guys are um, new harvest potatoes, so this time of year is when this dish is best. Yeah, bitter, creamy, acidic. Yeah. Mm. Daniel, you made a beautiful dish. I know dish. you were nervous about having Daniel over, and you were like, is this food gonna be good? But I think it worked out. <laughs> I appreciate you taking a leap of faith, truly. We just, we like to... Give the young upstarts a chance to make a name in this industry. It means so much. All the things you guys were saying, and like, he was fine. 